Titans. And look, not great last year. Five and eleven, but that was actually exceeding expectations. Very much so. So not not too shabby. Their win total this year is six. And to go over, it is juiced at minus one thirty five. To go under is plus one fifteen. So they expect some more good things from Brian Flores and this team. Brian Flores entering his second season. And look, they they sold the farm last year. I mean, they just got rid of everybody that was any good other than other than Devontae Parker. Um yeah, to win the division, they are plus eight twenty five. So we're not quite to that point just yet. And it, it may still be a few years before they get to that. Going through some of the numbers, offensive yards per play, 4.9. That was number 29 in the league. Defensive yards per play, uh, 6.0. That was number 30 in the league. Turnover margin, they gave up the ball 0. .6 times per game. That was number 27. And you look at these numbers, and you're like, how in the world did they win five games last year? I mean, it was unbelievable. Now, early in the season, they were dreadful, and they got better. They absolutely got better. This Here's, is why you have to throw some of those stats out the window. Some of those stats yeah. don't matter because the team at the end of the season weren't wasn't close to that, that team that was playing so badly at the beginning. Agreed. Uh, agreed. And that's where so many of those stats, you just get so far, far behind, you can't ever catch up. Oh, yeah. Oh, 100%. 100%. Um, the question here is, does uh, Fitzpatrick start all year, or does Tua end up getting a chance to build chemistry with Devontae Parker and the rest of those wide receivers? Uh, they brought in running backs Jordan Howard and Matt Breda. Um, they made Cowboys cornerback Byron Jones the highest-paid cornerback in the NFL, gave him a five-year, $82 million deal, which is absurd. Uh, and then they brought in linebacker Kyle Van Noy. And... You know, from the Pats, and I, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a stat that you may not have known. Uh, Kyle is 29 years old, and you and I think of that as a young man, right? Mm, okay. He is the second. Not in football. He is the second oldest player on this team. Ryan Fitzpatrick yeah. is 37. 30, 30 years old in the NFL is is pretty damn old, considering Agreed. the average lifespan of a football player is only three years, three and a half years, and Agreed. these guys come into the league at 24. That would mean everybody is, for the most part, done by 27. To reach the, 30 is massive. Ag- agreed, agreed. But there are there's a veteran leadership on the majority of teams, right? I, I would say. You've, okay, you've got yes. some guys that are 31, 32, 33, whatever. It, yeah. Guys play into their mid-30s. Fairly regularly, uh, especially quarterbacks and whatever else, and and really the quarterbacks of your defense and whatever else. So you do have some older guys. The fact that this guy is 29 years old and will be this season, and he is the second oldest guy on the team, they got a young roster, man. They brought in a bunch of rookies this offseason. They've got a bunch of young dudes. Um it's still gonna take some time. I think they are getting closer. I like what they did last year. They obviously improved, they advanced, they progressed, whatever kind of cliche word you want to use. I think they are a a decently good football team. They just don't have all of the pieces put together just yet. I've got them at 7-9. and nine. I think I was insanely generous. Um, I mean, to see them maybe, it, obviously the win total is 6 for a reason, but with it being juiced at minus 135 on the over, obviously they think it's more likely that they win 7 as opposed to 5. Um, I've got them at seven and nine, and and the schedule helps a little bit. Obviously, they you know they got a last place schedule. I I kind of like this team. I think it's going to take some time to build them in, but man, um, it, give me give me your thoughts here. I've got them at at six and ten. I got them right on the number, and uh, and I think that's pretty close to right. I think they'll be a game better than last year. Brian Flores is a real coach. He's he's going to be the first coach, in my opinion, to come out of the Nick Saban, uh, the Bill Belichick uh, coaching tree. That's actually good. That's actually belongs in the NFL as a head coach. I was very worried that I thought that he got his job a little earlier and, and he, and he took a job too soon. I was very er- worried that he went to Miami um, in a place that had just been bad for a long time and wasn't really well ran. Uh, they seem to have fixed a lot of those issues and uh, I like the way they're building this team. They're going young and, uh, and I'm okay with that. You got to hit on the quarterback at some point in time. Fitz, Fitzpatrick's got to stop playing, and and uh, or Fitzgerald, sorry, has got to stop playing, and then Tua's got to be able to show something. I know that his first couple of weeks in camp, 
there were reports that were, this is awful, but he's just now learning to run and take hits and move around again after major hip surgery. And so there's got to be some growing pine from that. He seems to have improved a lot from that, getting just more comfortable with the team. I don't even think it's the team, though. I think it's just getting more comfortable playing football. If there's any hesitation in him at all because of the injury that he took, he's never going to come back for him, from it. He's just, he's just yeah. not. And we won't know that in practice ever because he's never going to practice without a red shirt on. I personally would not start him at all this year. If they start off 0-7, 0-8, I still wouldn't do it. I I know that there are going to be people clamoring for it. I know that there's going to be an ownership that's probably clamoring for it. But I would stay the course and say, let's give him an entire year to learn the NFL, practice against real NFL defenses that we're practicing in in, in camp and on on our own team every week, Hold the clipboard. It's not a knowledge thing. It's not a learning the throws thing. He just has to be comfortable because if he goes out there on Sundays and he's not ready, it's not the hip that's going to re-get hurt. But guys that play Timmit get hurt constantly. Oh, and yeah. It's the You're next right. injury. It's the ACL getting blown out or it's falling on the shoulder wrong. It's There's a million things that can happen to your body when you are afraid. Um, and, and I, I think that's the worst thing that could happen to him. So I, I agree. I agree. Now their, their success in the future is a hundred percent tied to him. Um, so at some point in time next year, they got to put up, shut up. They got to know, is he the guy or not? Because you can't, you can't waste three, four years on him. His whole rookie deal is done and you still don't know. So I definitely think by next year, there's no other plan B. You don't bring anybody else in. You just bring nothing but capable backups, and they have to understand the role. You don't need anybody pushing him. Because if next year doesn't work, you basically have, quote, unquote, from a front office level, tanked for three years. And in the NFL, you've basically tanked players' entire career. Yeah. No, you're right. You can't do that. Uh, Matt Miller on YouTube uh, said, doing the two worst divisions of football today, I see. Uh, And then Matt Miller said, Tua will never have as good of a receiving core in the NFL as he did at Alabama. That will take time or to get offensive used to as well. Line. Yeah. Or Agreed. running game. Hey, I want to bring back something about uh, – you talked about the uh, the big-time cornerback that got paid in Miami. Yeah. We didn't talk about him for Buffalo. Trey White just is just licking his chops every time. He is, without question, the best cover corner in all the football. And cornerbacks this offseason have gotten paid. Oh, yeah. And I think he is just – Count that, but if I'm Buffalo, brother, you you better be freeing up some cheese because this guy's going to demand it, and he he has every right to because he is worlds better than these other guys getting paid. I, I think worlds you are better than them. I think you're 100 percent right. The, the fact that Byron Jones has an 82 million dollar contract, <laughs> Trey, is, Trey Trey's going to walk in and say double it, <laughs> and he'd be no, worth I'm it. Gonna need, I'm going to need it doubled right now. He would absolutely be worth it. Uh, I think he's worth it. But. Ben jumps in on uh, on Twitch. He said he could become a Sam Bradford if uh, the Dolphins aren't careful. He talked That's, about Tua. Yeah. Um, and yeah. then Matt said uh, Miami might have the best cornerback duo, though, with Xavier Howard and Byron Jones. Uh, maybe. Ooh, I don't know. Mm. I think the boys are new. I, I, I like New Buffalo. England going to have something to say about that. Yeah. Buffalo's going to have something. This division is going to have something to say about the cornerbacks. The two good teams are going to have something to say about the secondary being better than everybody else. Yeah, you, you got that right. You got that right. All right, with that said... Why don't we go ahead and hop into your boys? Let's let's discuss. Let's go up to uh, the Northeast here, and let's talk about 